I want to sing about it, but I'm a sing about it. And I will never let nobody ever talk me out of nothing but the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. Nothing but the blood, 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 the
Um, but you know, you guys, you know, we we stroll around Instagram and Facebook, and we come in contact with all of the popular memes and sayings and general thoughts and, and ideas and quotes and about relationships quotes. and things like that. And for the most part, honestly, there are a lot of good ones out there and encouraging ones, but we live in a society where we want to sensationalize everything. And I feel like it's irresponsible to just throw out quotes to people without any real substance, without really teaching them how to really live those things out. Because depending on who's hearing it or reading it, um, it, it could, it could, you know, cause some trouble. You know, it really can and um, stir up some real unrealistic expectations. If you want to learn about proper expectations, be sure to watch our last two videos on proper expectations in marriage because it's so important. But yeah, husbands or husbands to be, I'm here for you today because I'm gonna let you off the hook. So ladies, let me tell you, you know, if you're married to a man that you consider to be good, you know, he may not be perfect, nobody is, but he is good. He has the raw material to be the, a good husband, a good provider, a godly man, someone who desires to lead his family into the things of God, then you need to really appreciate that, that you have a man with all the materials it takes to be an awesome man. You know what I mean? So just, just take a moment to just, you know, reflect on that and be thank God for that because, you know, a lot of people don't have that. So thank God that you have that. Mm -hmm. With that being said, allow your man space and time to develop. You know, we want that picture book fairy tale husband, the knight in shining armor 24 seven. And he's not able to do that, you know? And I feel for men a lot of times because when I would look at Instagram and I see Facebook posts and things like that, it's like, they would be going hardcore about these men. It's like, if he don't answer the phone in 2.5 seconds of the ring, then he's up to something bad. He looking at another woman, why he ain't paying attention to me. You know, it's like, we want so much attention that this man just is, is he's, he can't win for losing because his phone has to be literally on 24 seven, has to be like embedded in his body. He can't miss not one vibrate, not one ring, or else, you know, it's a deal breaker. And I've, I kind of feel scared for a lot of men out here. I really do, because it's like, he literally probably didn't hear the phone. He literally probably, you know, was busy. He might just been asleep, you know? He probably just tired of, uh, tired and had to fall asleep because he, he, he's such awake trying to pay attention to you. <laughs> <laughs> and he's exhausted trying to pay attention to you. So he's like, man, I can't get a break. And it's like, we're so clingy. Some women are so clingy. Don't get me wrong. I love my husband and we are each other's best friend. And I would rather spend time with him more with, more than anybody else on this planet. However, however, there's such thing as smothering. We can smother a person to the point where they just discourage because they can't live up to your expectations. So allow him to develop and grow. Allow him to make mistakes. He's going to make mistakes. He's not going to always get it right. You know, um, your husband's not a mind reader. Um, tell him what Can you... you repeat that one? <laughs> your... one more time for the people in the back. <laughs> <laughs> your husband is not a mind reader, okay? And I have to tell you, I, even though I've, I heard that prior to marriage, there's something in us. It's like, it's like a, a default miswiring in all women that believe that men should discern what we want. It's because we are um, looking at them through our ability mm -hmm. to discern because women are normally, you know, have very, um, what's I'm looking for? Intuition. You know, we are yeah, very sensitive and we can discern feelings and thoughts a little bit better than most men. Mm -hmm. Um, or we're more attentive. We pay attention to, you know, body language and stuff like that. Unlike most men. So we just assume that our husbands should know what we want, especially if we've been together for a long yeah. time. And you feel like, well, he should know by now that I don't like that. Or he should know by now that this is what I want. Or I should have to tell him that I want this done or this done. But the truth is, you do have to tell them, you know, you really do. And I used to get 
frustrated because I felt like, well, how many times do I have to tell you to wring the rag out before putting it on the counter? Oh, okay. Pet peeve moment. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, thank you for watching our video here, but we want to interrupt for a quick moment to ask you a very important question. And that question is, are you born again? Do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? All the things we share yes. in these videos, you can't do them without Jesus being the foundation of your life and thus your marriage. Not successfully, you yeah. can get the results that we're telling you you yeah. can get. Yeah, so we want you to pray this prayer for us. Just repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Come into my life. I believe you died for me. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose for me. I believe you rose for me. You shed your blood. You shed your blood to forgive me of my sins. To forgive me of my sins. So I receive that forgiveness. So I receive that forgiveness. And I repent. And I repent. God the Father. God the Father. Receive me as your child. Receive me as your child. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Come and live on the inside of me. Come and live on the inside of me. I receive this free gift. I receive this free gift. Of salvation. Of salvation. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And that's all it takes. You are part of the family of God. The ultimate family friends. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So if you prayed that prayer, please let us know right now in the comments below. We want to know because this is a personal goal Amen. for us. We're going to let you get back to the video and keep learning some more tips on how to save your marriage. My husband, when we first got married, Jalen, oh my gosh, he just came in and he was like, babe, I'm going to clean the kitchen for you. You don't have to do that. And I'm like, what? A man that wants to do domestic duties, like clean the dishes? I'm all in for that. Praise God. But him and I got two different ways of cleaning the kitchen and washing dishes. Like, so when he started doing that for me, one of the things that really stood out to me is that he'll take the dish rag and he'll wash the dishes but he'll leave the dish rag just sopping wet and just plop it in the sink. And then I come in, in the kitchen the next day and it's like sour smelling and it's just annoying. This this cold, wet, yucky dish towel. And I can remember just so many times where like, at first I was nice about it. I was like, hey, why are you reading the rag out? You know, I was <laughs> trying to be like nice about it. Hey, thanks so much for cleaning the kitchen, but why you didn't clean the rag out, you know? He After like, a while, that first half disclaimer got yeah. erased. <laughs> it was just why you didn't do that. And then, and then, I mean, you know, we first, we were newly married, you know, and I'm trying to be appreciative. He, you know, he did dishes. Mm -hmm. He didn't have to do the dishes, but he did. Thank you, Lord. Um, so after a couple times of doing that, hey, ring the rag out. Then all of a sudden it came like, babe, look, you need to ring this rag out. The every time you don't ring this rag out, it stinks. And he just tells me, babe, I'm sorry. You know, I forgot. You know, and I just kind of overlooked the fact that the whole kitchen is clean, but this sopping rag is just sitting here like mm -hmm. an eyesore. And after a while, I mean, I complain all, every single time. I think one time you probably got kind of frustrated at me and it was like, babe, I'm sorry. Well, I think what it was wasn't so much that you were saying it, but I think after a while, what you began to take away from it was that I wasn't listening, I wasn't paying attention. Yeah. And so it became less of a correction of the way I was doing it and more of an accusation that I didn't care or that I wasn't yeah, listening yeah. or whatever like that. And you would begin to say things like, man, that was with that situation, but you begin to say things like, you weren't listening to me. And I'm like, wait a minute, don't tell me I was listening. I was oh, listening. He, oh, he I really get, I, that, was my, that was my pet peeve. He hated I hate being accused of not <laughs> listening just because I missed something or I forgot it. And what I'll try to make her see is there's a hierarchy of list of priorities in my brain that don't match yours. So it's not that I'm not listening, but it's that all these other things get done first and sometimes other things don't get done because either I forgot or I just haven't gotten to it yet. And so that would be a point of contention. And so I'll say from the man's perspective, I think what bothers us is the accusation that we don't care because yeah. we missed something. But it's not the case. We missed it for whatever reason that we missed it, but it's not because we don't care. We just are wired differently. Yeah, you know? so I mean, I got frustrated by it. But after the Lord began to deal with me, and I think I might have heard a message from like Joyce Meyer or something like that, and she was talking about that in relation to her husband Dave and I was like you know Laura I need to just be more content and just grateful for the fact that he is willing to do this I didn't ask him to do it he doesn't have to do it but he's willing to do it for me to take the load off of me so I'm not going to complain about this dish rag not being wrung out so if I got to come up behind him and ring the rag out then that's what I'll do and eventually you know he doesn't he stopped doing that I mean it's every now and then he might throw it in the seat but you know I don't Right now, I really don't make a big deal out of it anymore. It doesn't it bother me the way it did when we first got married. 
So what I'm saying is a lot of times we hop on the little things that our husbands are mm -hmm. not doing and we don't appreciate the things that he is doing. Um, and I think it's very important. I know it's very important to uplift your husband and to praise him for the things that he is doing. Like I make sure I tell him often how thankful I am, the fact that he gets up and go to work every day for us, how much he is developing in the things of God and, and the time he's spending with God to make sure that we're on the right track as a family. You know, um, when he does little stuff, you know, when he buys me a card or I say, babe, thank you for that, that's what I needed. Or even now, I'm I still thank him for doing the dishes. I mean, he doesn't have to do the dishes. We've been married almost three years. Next month. What? That There's hit, a special anniversary video or something. <laughs> that hit me this morning waking up. I was like, yeah. oh my God, next month. Actually, a few weeks from today. Less than 30 days now. We've been married three whole wow. years. Time has gone by so fast. We're going to do some kind of special video, maybe like I a live know. edition or something. I don't know. We'll do something. What should we do, I guys? Know. Our anniversary is September Yeah, what 3rd. would you want us to do, what should we do? for our anniversary, yes. uh, anniversary video? Yeah. Uh, let cool. us know. Hmm. But anyways, um, he still do dishes for me. You know, I don't have to do them. I don't. And so I make sure that um, I thank him for that. Uh, sometimes you don't always get the trash out as soon as I want the trash to be dumped. But he does take it out and, you know, I don't complain and I don't get angry or mad because the fact is my husband, he is doing a lot. And his mind worked different from mine. And he does have a lot on his shoulders to carry for our family. And I've learned how to sense when he's in that season of development like spiritually with God and God's dealing with him with things or even learn to sense when something's bothering him that maybe he's working out through his emotions that he hasn't really been able to verbalize just yet and you got to be discerning this is where the Holy Ghost really comes in as a wife you need to really pray for your husband because men are under attack on a daily I mean we are too but this is about the husbands right now your man is under attack daily. No matter what you think about him right now, you may think that he's not living up to his potential or he's not interested in life or he's not interested in doing this and doing that. But understand that he is really under a lot of pressure. The enemy is pressuring him to get off course because the devil wants to take our men out. Because he knows that if we, if we got a, a world full of godly men, strong in the things of God, men who are responsible for their families, then there's nothing that we can't do. We, we're going to put a big dent in the kingdom of darkness if men rise up and be real men. So understand that men are being under, are under attack on a daily basis, and especially husbands. Pray for your husband on a daily basis and ask God to give you discernment about him so that you would know how to minister unto him. And believe it or not, men are not that complicated. You know, sometimes they act like they are, they act all, you know, tough and closed off. I got this, I got this. But there are like little kittens, man. You say the right word and they just, they're, they're putty in your hands. Literally, I can just come over to him and just grab him and hold him like a baby. <laughs> a giant six foot baby. Because <laughs> men need to be touched. They need they need to be loved on. You know, men sometimes I like they don't need that kind of attention, but men need that kind of attention too sometimes. They need to be held and stroked and just loved on and say, babe, you know, I love you. Everything's gonna be all right. I got you, you know. And reassure them that you are behind them a hundred percent. Cause Men will get up and fight harder the next day if they know their woman mm -hmm. is there with them and that their woman believes in them. That's a big thing. They need to know that you believe in them because men come under a lot of attack when in their mind. You know, doubt, depression. I am amazed how many men deal with depression. Oh, yeah. I mean, big time. Mm -hmm. And again, because men don't always express themselves emotionally like we do, Sometimes we don't always, they don't always verbalize it as depression, but they come under attack in their mind. Sometimes they feel inadequate. They feel like they can't um, perform as a good husband. You know, they, they, they just feel small sometimes. And because they don't say it, we don't know. So that's where the, the Holy Ghost comes in and he gives you discernment on how to minister to your husband. So make sure that your husband know 
that you believe in him. I make sure my husband know on a regular basis, babe, I believe in you. You're the greatest man since since Jesus. <laughs> um, you're you know you're the greatest thing since sliced bread. Like you are the peanut butter to my jelly. Like you are just mm -hmm. you're that guy. You know, and I believe in you. And whatever we need, babe, I'm here for you. And even if it means just being quiet with them, sometimes he don't need us. My husband don't need us telling him everything they're doing wrong. Pointing out all their flaws. Well, no one needs that. I mean, nobody needs that. You're <laughs> yeah. right. But especially men, they don't want to be told how wrong they are, especially by the women. And um, this is not about a man being insecure and you guys not able to communicate with one another. But you know when a woman berates a man over and over and over again, just always complaining, always telling him, "Baby, you're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong." That turns a man off. You want to turn a man off? Just do that enough, and he'll dial right on out, and you'll be trying to figure out, well, why you don't want to talk to me? Why you won't be around me? Why you want, <laughs> you know, all these mm -hmm. questions. Well, maybe because he just needs you to be quiet and listen, you know? And, I mean, I know women, it's hard to hear because we think we write about a lot of things. You know, we, we do, but... Um, well, let's explain the reason for that because there used to be a culture of, woman just be quiet let him yeah. sit and watch tv yeah. and then just you know do domestic stuff and leave him alone and that's not what we're talking about because mm -hmm. that wasn't right. right either right what she means by be quiet and like i said this goes both ways because nobody a child will shut down if all their parents mm -hmm. doesn't them no one can handle Absolutely. that kind of getting beaten down into the ground like that but uh in context of a man and wife in marriage that whole be quiet thing is you got to learn to listen even when he's not speaking. Yes. And that's where godly discernment. And it's something built in a woman that God gave her that only women have, that men just don't. And that's why I believe in marriage so strongly because you bring something to the table that the other person cannot bring because yeah. God just didn't put it in them. Yeah. I think he did that on purpose. But the ability of a woman to listen to what her man is saying, even when he's not talking. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a famous saying, I might be butchering it, but you don't, you can't listen while you're talking, you know? Yeah. Um, and so, and there's two things that you have to do for a man. And the first one I want to say is this, in order to do any of the stuff that you're talking about, and reason why so many women might struggle with doing anything you're talking about, is because there's an element of trust missing from relationship oh, in the yeah. first place. Yeah. And so if you're True. suspicious that your man is unfaithful, if you're suspicious that he doesn't love you, that he doesn't <laughs> care, if you're suspicious that he doesn't even want to be home, if you have all these suspicions, it's hard to do any of this because there's mm -hmm. no foundation of trust. So go back and watch some of our other videos first, kind of to... Get your marriage in it. You need to, it doesn't matter how many problems you have in your marriage and you've worked out. This one foundation needs to be clear before you guys can start anything. And that's this. We're on the same team, mm -hmm. on the same side. Absolutely. And we are want, we both equally want all our problems to be fixed, even if we don't see eye to eye on how to fix them or what the solution looks like. One thing that we came to early on in the middle of our struggles was that we both wanted to come to the same ending, yeah. which was a solution for yeah. our problems, yeah. even if we were on odds at odds about them. So you need that first in order to do any of this. Otherwise, you will constantly be suspicious. And maybe you have a good reason for it because whatever may have happened earlier in your marriage, but you've got to squash that mistrust mm -hmm. if you're going to get anywhere. Absolutely. Okay, so that's number one. Um, number two is this, and that is that you mentioned about words of, it's kind of like words of affirmation, affirmation building yeah. a man up. So you may ask, well, how much does a man need? A lot. A lot. Do it, it every really day. Needs. Do it several times yeah. a day. As much as we claim that men need sex, they need this just as much, if not more, which is to have their woman tell them that you're doing a good job. You may say, well, I don't feel like he is doing a good job. He messed up a lot of stuff. We're going to need to do it by faith mm -hmm. then. I'm um, so you're going to have to use faith for your marriage here yeah. because your man does need that and that will build him up. You may say, well, that means he's insecure. That means he has Call a fragile. <laughs> as though you want them to be. Yeah. <laughs> like for real. And you're like, well, does that mean he's insecure? That he has a fragile ego? Well, he might. He might not. But. Something you got to understand about the makeup of a man. Here's something that society has done to men and women. For men, everything is based on your performance, what you do, what your work is, and how good you do it. Your success is based on your performance. Mm -hmm. For women, it's all based on their appearance. And that's the wrong that society has done to both is pressure the man. You're only as good as your last accomplishment. And women, you're only as good as how good you look today. Mm -hmm. um, and so because we go out into a world trying to conquer in the workplace or whatever like that, and I say that women don't, but I'm saying this is what the pressure of society places on men specifically that the devil has put in the place. And, in no, matter, and no matter how equal we may yeah. be in society today yeah. or 
whatever rights and liberality we've had, this mm -hmm. is still the core problem See, that gamed, women and men have. Yeah, Satan gamed the system. He built inequalities into the system. Mm -hmm. Then he built unequal standards for men and women in the system. And then he set them against each other. Yeah. When if we all realized that the devil was the enemy, not each other, mm -hmm. and men and women work together, married or not, but we all decided to work together mm -hmm. and just cut the devil out of the whole equation, we would destroy this world system exactly. and just transform for the kingdom of God. Exactly. But instead, we've got gender wars. And the devil created that. Men and women didn't create that. The devil created that from the get-go back in the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. We don't have time to get into that. But your man does need all of that. Call it insecure, call it fragile ego, whatever. The point is he needs it. And so help him, support him. Don't beat him down because chances are he's been beat down oh, yeah. by the world. Yep. Whether anyone's actually done it or it's just in his own thoughts. Because like you said, the thing about depression is real. It's you may need to talk to your man and find out if he's dealing with depression because he might not even be able to verbalize it mm -hmm. or even know that that's what he's dealing with because men have also been taught don't express your emotions mm -hmm. and feelings like that. So there's a lot of men, especially men of God, dealing with depression and they don't even know it. So you may need to learn to, like I said, listen even when he's not talking and really reach in and understand your power in prayer and being able prayer to reach in. is awesome. Yeah. I mean, little things like... I know my husband likes Doritos and brisk tea. <laughs> That's like do. old school favorite snack. Mm -hmm. So I would get a drop in my spirit. Sometimes I'd be out and it's like, go get him a brisk tea and some Doritos. And I put it on the counter. When he gets home, it's like his face light up. Mm -hmm. Like he's 10 years old. Like you thought about me. Yeah. And that's something that, you know, men don't always get from their women is that you thought about me. To care about the little things that make me happy. That's real big. You thought about me. Yeah. Which means you respected me, which means I was in your mind. And so if you're going through your day, you're going through life, especially if you get beat down and disrespected by so many people, but you've got to hold your tongue. you got to handle yourself a, a, a certain mm -hmm. kind of way if you're a mature man. And then you come through all that and you come through the door and there's someone who is thinking about you and loving you for no particular reason. Not because you did a good job. Not because you did everything perfectly, but just because they love you yeah. and they thought about you. Yeah. And that means a whole, whole it lot. Does. And that it will really melt does. a man from mm -hmm. the inside out. And that will make him correct some of the things you've been having problems with. Your love will shatter through some of those barriers. And then he'll be looking to reciprocate because men are natural givers. God built them that way. And we pour out. If you're a good man, we pour out. And we mm -hmm. do everything we can to make sure that life is good for our wives and our children. And if we're good workers, we'll do it at our workplace. We'll pour out and put our lives on the line to make this thing work. And you need to be able to receive back in. Um, so if you want to look at anything, what's my job as a wife? Yeah. Do everything you can to pour back into him everything that he's pouring out. And once again, if your struggle is, he doesn't look like that kind of man now. I don't feel like he's matching up. He's not a good man. You're going to do some stuff by faith. If you want your marriage to work. That's if you're not right. going to just cut loose and run, then this is some sacrifices you may have to make. Um, the Bible talks about you know loving your enemies because when you do this, you heap coals of fire mm -hmm. on their head. And even though your husband shouldn't be your enemy, <laughs> okay, but the act of love in itself, when you love on someone, well, especially when you know your husband may not be doing everything right. He may not be the man you want him to be today. And if, you know, you're in this to preserve your marriage, to build your marriage, you know, you're not looking to get out of it and you're believing God that your marriage is going to be mm -hmm. the marriage that God designed for it to be, then you're going to have to love your spouse regardless of what they look like right now and what they're doing or not doing. So this principle of love works even in this situation, even though your husband or your wife shouldn't be your enemy, mm -hmm. but if they're doing something that's contrary to your relationship, that's mm -hmm. causing division or, or, or uh, friction or anything like mm -hmm. that, then it's an enemy in itself yeah. um, that, that causes um, division. So love on them because it heaps coals of fire on them. And what that means, it means it brings them to a place of repentance. Mm -hmm. It brings them to a place of seeing themselves because if you love on somebody that's doing wrong uh, long enough, they're going to be like, listen, I don't deserve this. It's going to begin to soften them to the point it's like, why is she being so good to me? And I know I have, I'm not doing everything right. Why is she loving me like this? Why? Like, why? And God will begin to deal with them. And God will begin to convict their hearts because you've opened that door to them, you open that door to God. You allow God to get in on your situation by loving on your husband. 
And that's what we do when we love on our spouses, even when they're not doing everything right. And it goes for the, the man too, loving on his wife, you know, even if she's doing things that aren't all the way right. But in this case, we're talking about the husbands uh, in particular. Love on your husbands. Treat him the way God would treat him. You know, Jesus forgives us regardless of what we do. And that amazes me mm-hmm. that Jesus loves us so much, that God the Father loves us so much that he sent his only son. He gave his best. He gave his last. He did the ultimate sacrifice for us in believing that we will receive. Mm-hmm. Realize that we do realize that everybody has not received the love of Christ. Mm-hmm. There are people today still rejecting Jesus, but it doesn't matter. Jesus is still pouring out love. The Bible talks about he chastens those that he loves. God loves everyone on this planet, so he is continually in chase mode. Mm-hmm. He, is, he is running after us. He is always doing everything in his ability to reach to us because that's how much he loves us. So if we're to be Christ followers, if we want to love like Christ in our relationships, then that's what we're going to have to do for each other, for our spouses. And for from a wife to a husband, it's important that we show the love of Christ to him on a daily basis and begin to speak good about him, praise him. You know, just, just love on him. Say good things. The Lord will drop things in your heart to say to your husband because your, hus- your God knows the heart. God knows the keys to your husband's heart. He knows how to break them, you know, and God will put things in my mouth to say to my husband to just break him down, to open him up. Mm-hmm. Now, Jalen's a good husband. I have no complaints in the department of attention. You know, my husband gives me, you know, good attention, but there are things that I know that he goes through, things that I know that he deals with in his mind, things sometimes that he has a struggle talking to me about. And, you know, instead of me just berating him or making him feel small, I get wisdom from God on how to talk to him about these things, how to help him with these things, how to build his self-esteem up. Because men deal with self-esteem issues just like women. It may be different in how they express it, but they deal with it too. And it's important that we build them up. So I just wanted to share that because, (laughs) you know, men get a lot of, Flat man, they they you, we put a lot of pressure on them to be perfect. Knight in shining armor, they gotta be strong all the time. They can't be scared. They can't be late. They gotta answer the phone until my call. They better they better know what I'm thinking. They better know what I'm feeling. They better know when I'm hungry. You know, <laughs> you should know what time of the month it is. You should know all these things. Not for that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like we do. You need a wife app so that the app can like <laughs> alert you to all your wife's needs. Like. I've, I've met women, married women, that really put their husbands through. And it's like, that man is on edge. Because that man feels like anything I do, it might cause us to divorce. <laughs> because she is just waiting, you know, waiting for me to mess up. And that's just not the position that we should put our husbands yeah. in at all. <laughs> now, we dealt with some, I was term for this, laws of averages here or majority mm-hmm. rules. We understand that some of the things that we said, this is what a man is like, this is what a woman is like, in some cases it's reverse. Women yeah. have those attributes, men have those attributes. Yeah. We're not saying that's not true. We're just dealing with the majority here. Mm-hmm. So if it's reverse for you, the principles still apply. It sure does. Talk about it with your spouse and say, hey, actually, this is more like me. You know, that happens. We've watched videos before mm-hmm. and it was like, they're talking to me and you were like, well, actually, that's more me than you. And then we talked about it. So calm down if you're like, hey, that's not it. We understand that. We're just dealing with the majority here. That's most people. Yeah. But the principles still apply. You can still swap it. And for all the women here who might feel a little er, at this video, don't worry. We're coming back next week Got with you. Give Your Wife a Break, in which I will be being your advocate, lovely wives. Uh, and so you can send that video to your husband. So next week we're coming back with that one. But thank you for watching this one and making it <laughs> through this video we really do appreciate all, you as all. always if you watched it to the end raise your hands in the yeah, comments no. okay because we love it when you guys watch our yeah. videos to the end <laughs> and leave your comments i don't know we're making some interesting ones this time but hey yeah. it's all in love so um make sure you subscribe hit that notification bell so you can come back for next week on how men need to give their wives a break we love you guys we'll see you next time <laughs>